you know, just to get started, I'm just going to give a little um, background. Matt Black, reading from your bands in, or your band camp. Matt Black is an electronic group out of San Diego, California, producing sounds of sinister pleasures, visual arts, which is everything, and mechanical tinge dance music. The group captures lush, dark synth stylings, complemented by gritty industrial anthems while embodying their affinity for underground techno. Alex, Biddy, and Daniel serve as a three-piece ensemble. How did you three meet and decide, hey, you know what? We want to go ahead and start this uh, trio of music that, let's say, Michelle Halloween can't decide if she wants to dance to or fuck to or both while listening to Bear Stripped. <laughs> How did you guys meet and come together and decide to uh, procure this wonderful band? Um, we... Danny and I met in third grade. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so you've been I, your whole I'm life. Gonna, yeah, so I I met him in third grade, and then Biddy, I met him about I, I'm gonna say middle school, probably seventh mm. grade. Wow! So I've known them for for a while now. Um, we've been through an entire lifetime together Ooh. um this is the first time that we start a band to well i think i'm lying there we <laughs> played in a bunch of like little little bands over the years i think like during high school we we played covers and stuff that's kind of like how we taught ourselves how to how to play Ooh. music um but together as like a band, like writing songs and stuff, I don't think we, this is the first time we do it like full on. It's... Um, but we've, we've been in other bands together. Uh -huh. uh, not as, I wouldn't say not as, not as kind of essential members. So for example, uh, Danny and I play in the band called The New Division. Oh, okay. So I'm a drummer in that band and Danny's that uh, plays bass on that and we've kind of been like a long-standing lo part of the lineup there Biddy filled in guitar with New Division for like a summer in 2015 maybe Ooh. and then Biddy brought me over to Julian K um uh, <laughs> yeah those guys are guys from Orgy and they, yeah they have this band called Julian K and, and I toured with them and recorded their last record um, was part of the writing process of that record um, for probably most of 2017, 2018, up till like the pandemic is kind of when I decided to um, move on from the band. Okay. Um, and Matt Black, I, we had talks, you know, the, the, the three of us had talks before. It's like, hey, man, we're best friends. We're homies. Like, when are we going to do our own thing? <laughs> <laughs> and we just kind of you know in drunken banter we just kind of would say hey man let's do it yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna do it right and the pandemic hit Ooh. um i had leftover demos um i have a solo well had because matt black is like taken over completely uh over my life and and rightfully <laughs> so um because it's just kind of become its own thing and yeah. um and it's kind of lived on and it's you know it's we're getting great reactions our shows are filling up and it's kind of like wow this is like this is like a real band okay so all my eggs are in this basket at the moment i can tell but, and uh, you have modern wave coming up and it's like well you know, it's really hard to describe it. It sounds like you have um, the imposter syndrome in a sense, like, I can't believe this is taking off the way it did. And that's what I love about, you know, this new wave, I call it, of um, dark music, you know, dark uh, goth music. Um, as I said before, Matt Black is super versatile with, you know, the dark and more sinister moods. I, I can't decide if I want to dance or fuck or both when listening to <laughs> Bear or Stripped um you know or perform ritual when i listen to pure and monumental which my son is annoyed with me because seriously pure and monumental <laughs> are anthems for me they're kind of my affirmations as i go through um this new season of my own life so again thank you for these fabulous songs that just you thank know you. i i can't get enough of it and I, I mentioned to you in uh, Instagram that pure is actually a, an affirmation of mine, the line of 
I'm a liar to myself. Um, I'm allowed to forgive myself. What kind of mindset were you in when you, the three of you, I assume the three of you came up with the lyrics to the songs and then I'll get into the music <clears throat> aspect of it. Like what kind of mindset were you in with these? I mean, it, it's powerful. Uh, the words are powerful. I think it, 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 the song always struck a chord and, you know, sometimes we, we don't usually start songs with a concept in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, Usually, you know, I'll start a, you know, one minute bar, uh, loop of the idea, which was in this particular song and, and that, that driving beat. And then I'll just start riffing on vocals, right? So that, like, the understand and all those, like, words were kind of mumbled into, like, my ideas of trying to capture a melody. And it, th what you hear now is legitimately the tone and exactly the way I riffed it the first time. Wow. And then we, we, we started listening to it, right? The demo I was like, what, what is it? What were you trying to say? <laughs> and, and I just remember at that time period, you know, I was going through um, a very introspective time, right? Mm -hmm. Because I've, I've lived a, a, I'm young, but I've lived a lot mm -hmm. in, in the sense that I've, I've gone through a lot of hardships. Uh, nothing of, has ever come easy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I lived abuse. I lived uh, heartache. I've said and done horrible things at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was going through a transition period in, in life where, you know, I was feeling these changes. And I think over the past 10 years, I've, um, you know, of being a young 20 some year old to now almost 40, mm -hmm. I, you know, just kind of think of, of all these things I've done instead and, um, and people I've hurt and mm -hmm. people that have hurt me. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and I think it's just like, I'm allowed to forgive myself, you know, I'm, I'm allowed to, to have gone through this and and you know i've lied to myself over the years mm -hmm. um and yeah I, and it gets a little bit deeper in the sense that there's a lot of codependency mm -hmm. um, in the song as well you know uh we've all had that that person in our lives that um has lived through this horrible life and relationship of either having a mother or someone that's codependent on them and that we just keep enabling this behavior. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the song just kind of scratches the surface of of those feelings and going through change. And most importantly, um, someone that loves someone that affects them so much. Mm -hmm. And and this tends to be a, a, a topic that keeps coming up a lot in, in, in our music mm -hmm. uh, because we all have that. We all have that person. It's like, man, what are you doing there? Why are you still there? Uh, what do you see in this person? And so the, the song does kind of like step into the third person, right? Um, yeah. Um, you wouldn't understand what I see in you. Yeah. And yeah. So it's, I'm, it's, it's, it's a deep song. And sometimes I hear it and I, I, I feel like crying sometimes. But um, I think putting it in writing and putting it out mm -hmm. allows you to move on and allows you to kind of understand it. So very therapeutic things, almost like sitting with a therapist. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, tearing up as you say this um you know it's it's very rare when I um come across a musician I talk to a lot of musicians that actually and you 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 projected everything that I feel when I listen to that song it, and it does take me back it's a for song of forgiveness it's a song of codependency um tonight pink moon which is a Again, this just goes to show how magical this song is. Um, again, just me expressing my gratitude for you being able to put it out there. Um, it is one of those um, moons where we decide where are we going to keep this relationship? Are we going to move on? You know, it's right. like a relationship type of mood and or moon. And another thing, when I had sent um, Pure to a friend of mine who inspired this season of my podcast, um, mm -hmm. He had mentioned, because um, we connected over music, he had mentioned that, first of all, the song is just a hit straight on the nose for the both of us, and that it's also 
one of the things that music, you've heard it before, Alex, where music has saved someone's life. A song has saved someone's life. And one of the things we're going through these dark, depressing times was that these particular songs are inspiration because you survived. The artist survived that moment to go out there and share that song and share that pain. So it's it's life-saving in a sense, too. And it's inspiring. So, oh, I'm trying not to scare uh, up anymore. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I appreciate you saying that. And most importantly, that, you know, at least that you, you were able to catch that from the song because mm -hmm. that's what the song means to us and um, what it means to me. And um, mm -hmm. there are times that I listen to it, like I said, and I feel like tearing up a bit. Not necessarily yeah. because I'm being a little weenie, but <laughs> um, I'm just kind of thinking about myself back then and mm -hmm. how I was feeling at that moment. And there was just the, these strange moments in life where I, I, uh, uh, I was there mm -hmm. and, and I still remember, you know, I still remember that. And I'm like, man, I, I've, I've come so far. <sighs> where, where I am now that it, it's just kind of hard to listen sometimes it, it is a hard song it's one that you can't listen to every day that's for sure I listen to Monumental every day but <laughs> well my son my son <laughs> he's three years old and uh -huh. um he just plays Mad Black all freaking day <laughs> where it. it's like driving my wife insane and myself insane where I'm just like man like <laughs> it's kind of cool in a, in a way um, to see that he likes it, but at the same time, he's kind of torturing me. <laughs> he's like, okay, you're making this an anthem. <clears throat> you know, and yeah. going back to a little bit of like the meaning of certain songs, another thing that made, that attracted me to uh, literally every single song in remix that you've put out, um, you know, with I'm Waving, Not Drowning, um, and, and again, those remixes, bare or stripped, is a song that, you know, or you go to a Depeche Mode show and you see all the blonde girls acting like strippers. I've never taken <laughs> Stripped as a song that has anything to do with sexual innuendos. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm like one of the few rare that I'm like, oh, this is a song about stripping? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, again, um, the with Stripped, there's like very, very many renditions of that song, but yours alongside... Rammstein and Depeche Mode is the fucking best. Um, oh, thank you. It's like no, this, I really it means a lot. <laughs> it's um, so good. <laughs> like I get, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps because seriously, it's like Matt Black is my go-to. I'm your three-year-old son um, in a 43-year-old woman's <laughs> body. <laughs> <clears throat> um, no, I appreciate it. It's one of our favorite Depeche Mode songs, and weird. we felt it wasn't really heavily covered. We want, I we knew mm -hmm. we wanted to cover something. Um, you know, as, as as we were discovering Matt Black sound, Ooh. we were like, we should do a cover. Let's do Depeche Mode. Yeah. And now as as like we've grown a little bit more, um, we were getting a lot of comparisons to Depeche Mode. Ooh. So now I'm kind of like, damn it, why did we cover Depeche Mode? I, you <laughs> not, know what? Not like I the disagree. thing, like we're like the biggest freaking <laughs> copycats of Depeche Mode. I'm like, man, um, <laughs> We love Depeche Mode and, um, <laughs> you know, and it's just like, oh, of course they have a cover. They sound like Depeche Mode and they cover Depeche well, that's Mode. That's okay. But... You know, there's a but... <laughs> band up here and I hope you get to meet them when they come, when you come up to Portland, who did a um, rendition of, um, they have a, the best rendition of uh, New Dawn Fades from Joy Division. And nice. yeah, it, it's, that's my favorite, like Joy Division song, right? So Oh, just the goosebumps. It's just, it's the way the, that you're delivering it that does something. Alex, I think it's your voice. Yes. Um, your voice, you know, going into the performance that you put on for Pure in the music video. I don't even want to call that a music video. It's more of a music experience. Um, and that wasn't even a live performance. But I cannot wait to see what you do live because the way I felt listening and watching that video, my mouth was open. And I was just astounded. So, yeah, go ahead and do as many Depeche Mode covers as you want, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, we, we, when we covered that song, we wanted to make sure we um, kept it a little bit modern and our, like, on our end of mm -hmm. uh, the spectrum. But we also wanted to pay homage on the 101, Depeche Mode 101 performance. Mm -hmm. 
and we kind of just kind of grab inspiration because that and that song and, and the live version of um strip on 101 they had like these hammers yes. that they were hitting and we're like man what if we did that with the cover and then made it you know super modular and you know uh, modern to today's uh, music mm-hmm. and yeah that, that's just the way it went and but in this i think in in, in a way that kind of how we just found our sound yeah you i think that's fantastic because they're you know depeche mode is the foundation one of the foundational bands to you know this kind of of music so i mean who's going to carry it on with that modern sound that's what that's what all of these darker bands like matt black um fucking male tears i'm wearing their t-shirt right now um you know other bands that are in this new wave of dark wave and post-punk and i can't consider you post-punk i i see matt black more as um electronic goth music whatever i hate putting labels on just sinister music but it's just how else do you pay homage how else are we going to we're inspired by them so therefore let us put it Mm -hmm. out there and that brings me to a little bit about the gatekeeping in the goth community in southern california before just as i started discovering um the san diego goth scene it was because of jason lee rivet daddy um Uh i was like oh yeah you know i've been going to these clubs in um san diego michelle you should come and i'm like yeah i'm moving to portland where you know with intimate (laughs) goth you know it's i love portland trust me i have no regrets about living up here (laughs) um because i was done with la i was done with the la scene it was becoming too fucking toxic it was like going in, you know, to a club and I couldn't even dance because I was watching my back or my drink the whole time. Wow. So, yeah. I mean, it was just, it got really, really toxic. That's what so I've then, heard. Yeah, it's true. And, it, you know, I was talking to Jay from Darkness Calling um, in the previous episode and I asked her, I said, you know, I want to make this trip down to San Diego on April 15th for Modern Wave. I love uh, Tristan, author and Punisher. Mm-hmm. He's a music experience. But it's you guys that I want to see. <laughs> like you're well, the Well, hopefully you get to you get to make it. You know, I, put, I really want put to. my heart and soul into the show, and it's I can um, tell. probably some, one of the biggest things I've ever done. Oh, sure. you the fact that, and this is what I, I'm starting to notice about San Diego is that you have this golf community down there, and it seems like from what Jay has said, she, they've been down there that it's safe. It feels safe. It's fun. And, you know, I've talked to Javi Nunez and I've talked to um, Seven Seven Strangers, her name, Jamie. And it just seems like a place where I can go and be comfortable. So what is it like having, you know, people coming from L.A. or the Inland Empire? How does the San Diego dark music scene compare? Because you're in it because you're making the show. You have the connections. You were able to land author and punisher for Modern Wave. That's huge. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I think you, 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 you've got it pretty straight on. Um, it is a very safe environment to be in. Of course, you know, as, as if you're in a goth community or any community, really, you start, you know, seeing, uh, recognizing faces and Mm -hmm. and you start seeing kind of, uh, a lot of the same crowds and whatnot, but the scene is so big out here Mm -hmm. that there is a post-punk crowd. Mm -hmm. And then there's a night where everyone's together. And then there's the kind of the electronic um, dark community. And then there's the techno scene. But wow. all these scenes is such a like large and impressive community, very loving community. Um, mm-hmm. You hardly see any drama. You hardly see any um, anything crazy, really. We keep it pretty straightforward. If and anyone stops out of line, you know, they get checked pretty quickly. <clears throat> and, um, you know, something that we've, when Mad Black came out, I started, you know, reaching out to places where to see who could book us. But we're so new that, you know, no one wanted to book us. That's and crazy. Then a, and then uh, we did get offered a show to open up for actors. Ah! Um, and I think it's probably one of our first shows. And I was just like, look, man, like, I love actors and I love the opportunity, but I just don't see Matt Black um going that route right i want to uh make a statement and put on our first show and and not not because i didn't think you know 
we couldn't open for actors, but mainly because if I want people to see us, I want people to experience a show. Yes. I didn't want to see uh, people to see Matt Black for 20 minutes set where yes. there's no lights and no nothing, you know? I wanted the whole package to be as we've presented everything, mm -hmm. you know, all our videos, our visuals, our mm -hmm. marketing, um, our, our, our logos, the, the way we, we project the sound to be, that's what we want people to feel when they come see us live. And we just wouldn't be able to pull that off. You know, we wouldn't mm -hmm. have been able to be like, hey, actors, uh, we need 30 minutes to sound check and put up our entire light rig. You yeah. know, you've been touring all of the US and you're gonna have to deal with that. And that wasn't really what we wanted to put anyone through or the promoters through. So we're like, Ooh. we need to book our own show. We booked Love our own it. show and we sold it out. <laughs> How did that feel? <laughs> well, it just, it just, it felt, it felt good because I was just kind of, okay, well, if promoters don't want us and mm -hmm. we're struggling to book shows, well, let's do our own shows. Yeah. And then we did our own thing. We hired our own openers. We hired our own lighting crew. We hired all that stuff. And then it just ended up proving to work. And then that's how I kind of started getting involved into building the building these these shows. And we've been getting more conceptual kind of types of shows where we're kind of doing. Uh, we have different type of visual artists. We have BDSM performers and. We're just making it into a really cool experience. And that's where Modern Wave came in. And actually, Javi Nunez is my partner in that. Mm. And we're like, OK, he has his own thing. Matt Black was kind of doing its own thing. And then I'm like, hey, man, like, why not just join forces? And yeah, Javi is. Make this, and make this just the <laughs> best it can be. And that's what Modern Wave is. I mean, uh I can't even tell you. If you happen to go. Hopefully you can, but but it, we, it's gonna be insane. Just yeah. everything that we have with it is gonna I, be insane. I don't think I want to wait till August to see you. <laughs> <laughs> till you come up to Portland, I do think there is something special about seeing bands in their home element. Um, it's not that I mean I want to go, and it's just a matter of deciding: is are we gonna spend the plane tickets, or are we just gonna drive it? And I think we'll just drive it. Um, Ooh, fuck it. I mean, we, we're, we should be used to it. it is a drive, but you know what? It's we're that's used to drive. it. Yeah, we're used to it. So yeah. <laughs> uh, we were like, we're not going to fucking Southern California at all this year. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's gonna be great. Yeah, everything's I, I gonna be like, great. Plus, I've been you know observing. You know, I've been watching what's going on with um, Matt Black with Javi with Seven Stranger, with um, Club Sabat. Thank, again, thanks to Jason. <laughs> I've been watching yeah. for a while going, shit, man, we left a little too, well, we left when I was supposed to leave. Um, yeah. But I wish I would have had the opportunity, but I feel like I need to go. Um, you know, just talking with you now, it just, I, I feel what you're feeling and I want to experience it. You must be some kind of water sign. Are you, are you into astrology at all? Are you a water sign of any type? I'm a Scorpio. Yep. Okay. Got it. I, okay. I was like, there must be something <laughs> I could just play off of it. But the fact that you were mentioning the visuals that it takes, the, it's an art installation is what I'm looking at with modern wave, which is something that for um, an audiophile like me, I want a whole experience. I love, you know, like you were mentioning with actors, I went to go see, and Jason's amazing, but he's getting older and grumpier and tired. <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of like, you know, we're sitting here fussing over um, tickets for actors or tickets for even The Cure for this experience where, you know, they're out there, they're doing their thing. But I get what you're saying where, oh, we've got to put on our whole show because you need the full experience. This isn't a money grab. This is pure passion. So I'm... I'm all about it. The goosebumps are insane. So, yeah. you know, with that, the, even like the merch line and partnering with Javi is huge. Um, collabing with him, the VIP package for Modern Wave. You said you've been working on this show for months, right? Do you want to enlighten us? You said it's taken over. Well, Matt Black has taken over your whole life with Modern Wave. And I'm assuming this isn't the only show that's live show that's going to happen. Um, right. You know, based on... So the the website and everything <laughs> yeah so um modern wave is is completely separate from matt black Ooh. uh matt black you know we we've, we've been doing our shows and and 
we're still going to be continue to do exactly what we're doing. You know, Ooh. our Matt Black shows are going to still going to be themed. Ooh. We're going to have great bands open for us, and we're going to push the lighting and Ooh. the visual piece of it more and more, and just increase the the potential of what the band is. Ooh. And you know, add music box. We're going to bring that right. We're going to we're going to bring our whole our whole like package. Like we want people to see Matt Black at its full potential. Ooh. Um, and because at the end of the day, if someone experienced something real and some something true Ooh. and something that took time to to build and and if you're there and you're just like, man, this is not just some electronic band, like this is right. This is the real thing, you know. Um and, and the reason I say that is because, you know, I remember going to see Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Like, oh my God, like what? You know, and and you know, I I love a lot of different bands, you know, the cure. Roy Sop and like the knife and Bjork and yeah. all these like artists that I loved over the years is that's what I experienced. Yeah. I'm like, man, what are they doing up there? I wonder how this they do this. And then you see a live performance of them on YouTube. And you're like, dude, this is so amazing. Like I just want to go see that. Right. And I'm, I'm pretty sure other people feel like that about music. Mm-hmm. And I want to make sure we do that. So I, I want to make sure we don't water down anything. Love but it. on the modern wave side, sorry, chatting way too much. But no, please don't stop that. On the modern <laughs> wave, on the modern wave side, is you know I've developed um, these skills and these things with marketing and Ooh. and video editing and things like that. And um, I went to uh, I took some marketing marketing schools and 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 I'm really involved in the business side as well. But I'm also kind of on the production side as well. You know I have the knowledge of making music and creating things. And also I understand how, what being an artist is like and going to play at a show with a promoter. Mm-hmm. I, I know how I want to be treated there. Yeah. So if I can bring that to the table and partnering with someone like Javi um, that kind of already has a skin in the game and merging these things together, that's kind of what brought this. You know, it was our relationships, mm-hmm. our skills put together. Now we're creating the modern wave is going to be its own universe like we have cotton candy we have all kinds of weird stuff that's going to be going on but i mean just the caliber of the artist we just kind of like i said we just want to push everything as hard and and as big as as possible because we know where where certain areas are missing and what what's missing out of these goth events what what can we what can we do to make this better and that's what we're doing Oh, I fucking love it. And that's, that's what, what we're doing. <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. This is why I was like honing in on it. Um, you know, as a person who started, you know, with myself, it was all about cons and pop-up shows and all these other things. But I said, you know what? I It's the music. You know, I've always been into my music. Um, you know, so the fact that you're putting this on is fantastic. This is like... And again, just in comparison of why, you know, San Diego has been so alluring for me after leaving and moving all the way up to, you know, Portland is the experience. It's the feeling that I've been trying to capture, the nostalgia of watching a movie and seeing an underground show that I want to experience in my lifetime without, you know, (laughs) without any bullshit of the 80s uh, or cigarette smoke. The fact that you're making this a whole installation a whole experience is everything because you're right what do we usually do we go to the club we dance we cry and we go home um that's not what i'm getting at portland you know the shows up here there's always something to do i can't wait for you to experience the coffee the coffee club not coffee i need the coffee coffee. and the coffee coffee club and the coffee we need a coffee cart at the coffee club but you know one of the things that sets sets the coffee club apart is it's not just a dance club it's a music venue you can have dinner there you have your drinks you can get something in a vending machine i mean there's always something there every every show is an experience so i can't wait for you to experience that but you know i can't wait for modern wave i just fuck it it seems like it not that i was worried about it not being worth it it's it's fantastic i've been telling my husband um it's worth it that author and punisher himself is somebody because he my husband doesn't appreciate the music as much as i do he appreciates how you made that happen how did you make that visual are you into health what's that are you into health 
the band. Yes, I am. Well, yeah, I was yeah. like, this is fantastic. But it was, I haven't seen Health Live. I've seen Tristan Live. And I was like, whoa, what is this? Like, um, so this is, and even with Straight Razor, or Straight Razor Omar, this is fantastic. I can't, I'm, obviously I'm having trouble articulating my excitement. <laughs> what I'm trying to convey. <laughs> but it's just, it's really moving and so here's another thing. How are you managing your, how are you balancing your uh, day-to-day life with Matt Black and Modern Wave? Um, you said you had a family, you have a little one. So how, how do you manage yeah. your health? <laughs> so I, I have three kids. I have three okay. kids. So I have a 16-year-old, a 15-year-old, and then the three-year-old. Love. And I also own two businesses. <laughs> um, and then I have Matt Black. And then I now acquired Modern Wave this year. Um, I think the I divide my life into a pie, right? Ooh. And if I'm not, like, right before this interview, I was working on some of the new Matt Black material. Ooh. So I'm like, okay, I have an hour and a half. I'm going to put an hour and a half into this track that we've been working on. And then, you know, throughout the morning, I start sending out, you know, messages of, um, you know, to health and making sure the light and production is good. Um, Sending emails that involve Modern Wave. And then I'm constantly going back and forth with the guys. Also, the marketing, setting up the tour. Um, and then, you know, at three o'clock, I'm going to go home mm-hmm. and, you know, go on daddy duty and <laughs> help my wife with my son um, and, you know, kind of like take him off her hands and, you know, take him to the park and stuff. But um, I just make sure that, oh, and I, I, I go to the gym and stuff and mm-hmm. I just make sure that my spiritual life my love life, my family, my friends, uh, my music, all these things are important to me, all have a perfect divided amount of the pie so that uh, I'm not spilling over too much into one side because if that happens, then the entire thing just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. If I'm spending too much time on Matt Black, pretty sure it's going to piss off my wife as much as she's supportive of it. She's like, dude, you've been at the studio every freaking day this week. Mm-hmm. like and that's just not cool you know you yeah. have to have a level certain level of respect and i just make sure that you know sometimes i spoil her and spend an entire friday saturday and sunday dedicated to her and the kids and <laughs> um and then you know i go back to my crazy life and stuff but for the most part uh, some people would say it's insane mm-hmm. um that i do it um, but believe it or not, I make time for friends. I make time for family. I make time for the gym. I make time for Matt Black. I make time for my production stuff. I make time for my businesses. Um, I I'm it. just busy. I'm yeah. busy all the time. And do you stay? It's, do it's you crazy. sleep? Do you sleep at all? <laughs> I, <laughs> I do sleep. Okay, I'm always like ah. I think a lot of it too is um the what you mentioned the spiritual um. The spiritual side of thing is at the core of everything. That's where the music comes from. That's where the energy comes from. The motivation comes from. I think, you know, going to the gym, um, you know, as you mentioned that you're almost 40. I'm 43. And it's amazing how everything just comes into perspective at this point in our lives, especially in the society that we're living in right now. Um, what I feel like, Alex, what you're doing is you're on the right track for the shift that we're all moving into with the society that where music, art, um, family, love, those connections that we make, like you're saying with friends and then producing your own material for, you know, people like me to come and enjoy and experience feeling without being able to put it into words. <laughs> and yeah. then you we're going to be the ones surviving this shift. Um, you know, when everything's dusted and left, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be full revolution mode, but I do think there is a shift where music, art, poetry is going to be valued, is going to be the new economy. It's going to be what's valued in darker times. And when we have people who have experiences and then turn it into music and then turn it into a whole visual experience, 
I think you're on the right track and that's what's going to survive. And that's probably why Matt Black is doing so well. Um, I was surprised, you, you know, I just discovered you guys about a year ago, um, but I was even not surprised, but you've been outside of uh, California. What just, this will be the last question too, but what was your experience like outside of California in other alleged, you know, electronic gothy music scenes? And why, you know, now that you're coming up to Portland, is it, are we expecting a tour or <laughs> like what else is coming for Matt Black this year that you're able to give away? Yeah, um, you know, living in this day and age, I guess we could, you know, say that we're going to tour. Um, you know, we we're scheduling dates. So I think August, it's looking like we're probably going to do <clears throat> San Diego again um LA um Portland Denver uh Seattle um we'll probably stop there um and and the reason I I say this is because we've we've done everything I've gone on tour you know I toured with Julian K the entire country right and I went outside to Europe and everything and I've just seen that the and I've toured with New Division as well. And mm-hmm. and I, I see a lot of bands that, you know, go on these tours and they hit the Midwest. And they some of these, like, cities, they're hard mm-hmm. because the communities are so small. And we're like, and there are times where we're just like, dude, why are we doing this? Like, why are, yeah, why are we well, playing this show here, right? Well, like, yeah, we three here? brown men walking around the Midwest seems <laughs> terrifying to me. I'll just say it. It's like yeah. all the, I'm brown, and I'm like, fuck, even where I live, I'm like, fuck. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the last thing I want is because we have, Mad Black does have a formula. Mm-hmm. We have a formula, and we know what works, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, the first time we played in Denver, we sold we sold pretty much almost all of it. Uh, and it was our first time there, but we applied the same concept that we applied here in San Diego, which was make sure we have, you know, a good marketing video, make sure we have a good social media strategy, Ooh. make sure it's the right scene, <clears throat> the right type of crowd. Ooh. And we just put tons of attention into it and we got the people there. Yeah. And we had fans and we had an amazing time. And we're going to do the same with Portland. We're going to do the same with Seattle. It, every time we've done this, it's it's produced results. But you yeah. know what doesn't work? Going across the entire U.S. when we know damn sure we have, you know, 20,000 monthly listeners. Mm-hmm. And no one freaking knows who we are. Yeah. Why are we playing in South Carolina? <laughs> but we did play in South Carolina. And... Here's what we did find out. We found out that a lot of these shows that we played that were on tour because we're, we're supporting Solar Fake um, is that every time we finished performing, people were there. We sold a lot of our merchandise like within wow. three days, four days. Love it. And we're like, man, we really undershot this. Like we thought no one was going to buy merch and we sold out of it. We had to call in for favors to fly out more merch. Um, every time when we Tampa, we it murdered over there. Like wow. in Tampa, it was just nuts. I mean, just the crowd was nuts. Um, and I think one of the things that we proved is that, and a lot of the people that were coming is like, we came to see you guys. And where I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Like, how? It's like, no, we came to see you guys. Like a guy brought his daughter to to one of the shows. And, oh. um, and I was just like, oh my God, man. Like, this is, this means something. And this is real. Wow. And one thing I, I, I want to know for sure and I want to do is I want to make sure that I take my time in these valued markets. Like, for mm-hmm. example, I have an opportunity here to play at Portland, Seattle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm isolating these two places because we want to make sure we put everything into those those shows Absolutely. and those cities so that we know for damn sure next time we plan a tour, and we're going to hit the entire West Coast that we've paid attention to those areas already. Mm-hmm. And that when we come in, we can actually uh, successfully run through those cities without knowing what to expect instead of right. 
killing ourselves and then failing in some areas. So I'd rather spend a little bit longer time instead of doing these crazy tours Ooh. to spend time in these individual cities. So then eventually do an entire tour where we know what to expect. Okay, in Phoenix, Arizona, with a little light over there, this is what we should do next. I'd rather do those things instead of killing ourselves and going to the Midwest and 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 these uh, smaller areas and stuff. Which, yeah. by the way, it was it was beautiful, but it was hard. It was yeah. hard on the band. Uh, we were and I don't think people realize that. The, yeah. No, it was very hard on the band. Where we're just like, why? Like this? Is, we, we we shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. And, we're not I, I, and it makes me we're feel not, like shit. we're not corn and we're not slipknot. Slipknot right? can get away with touring the entire country and not feeling a freaking difference. Yeah. A small band like us, those little shows in these uh, small um, cities and states and stuff, um, they they hurt us. Yeah. They hurt us emotionally. They hurt us. Uh, we got our stuff stolen. No. Uh, we lost money on this tour, which we were supposed to be an exposure tour. Like right. we want to gain new fans, and I guess at a certain level we did, but we got robbed. Um, <laughs> so we didn't sleep. Um, it was just rough. And I was like, "This is not our way." Right. We it's... know our. Way. We know the Mad Black way. We've seen it. We've tried it. It works. Why are we not doing that? And we need to do that. Your formula is fucking brilliant. And I'm excited. I and I hope that we can develop, you know, this further connection, Alex. Alex, where I can come to you with. I shall know how she can help promote you too, um, yeah. in any way that I can, because you know, with. No, I I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, it's uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that it's not just about me. I mean, when I get attached and I I feel this connection and feeling with a musician, it's my way because I don't have any musical talent myself to share this with, you know, my listeners and my friends um, who, you know, unfortunately some of them do live in the little towns where they understand why bands can't come through, but the music's there. And I think that as long as you're putting out the light, the dark light, I should say, <laughs> keep doing <laughs> what you're doing. It's affecting people. Like you were saying, you're even surprised about the, the people that, your music has reached so just keep going and we're here for it i'm here for it um i'm willing to travel 17 hours to be there because i'm not <laughs> waiting until august to see you guys um yeah you're just it's a comic matte black aside from always trying to pick matte black lipstick is you know <laughs> might have it tattooed on me somewhere alex thank you so much for this i thank i you. really appreciate your time i know you're an incredibly busy artist <laughs> Uh, again, it's it wasn't for nothing, and I appreciate it. Anything else that you want to add? Any shout outs? Um, yeah, well, thank you again for for having me. Um, obviously, anyone listening that hasn't listened to well uh, to uh, Matt Black, um, you can find us on social media. Matt Black, mm -hmm. it's Black with B L V C K. Um, you can find us on social media. It's Matt Black US. Yes. Um, check out Modern Wave, which is our upcoming show on April 15th with Health, Author and Punisher, Straight Razor, Matt Black. Um, a lot more on that lineup. Um, stay tuned for new music from Matt Black. Uh, we have probably one of the best things we've ever done, for sure. It's, it's definitely a grown-up version of our last album still very similar to our last album but very matured version of it it's a it's a it's just more focused than our last record it's I, it's a lot like the last record but really really focused i cannot wait um, for it uh, oh cannot wait alex again thank you so much 